Guys, the pod showed up. Put a bunch of stuff away. So today is Tuesday, December 6th. Um, I'm outside in a t-shirt right now. I don't know why. It's really not that cold out. But we're packing up. We're getting ready to, to move out. We're out by the 16th, but I'm moving in this weekend. So are my brothers. Um, anyways, chest day. Last time I hit a chest workout for you guys, uh, I didn't have all the footage. It was just bench press. So I'm going to take you through a full routine. I'm going go, gonna to go more into depth with a voiceover on why I do certain things and whatnot. But first, we're going to get a pre-workout meal in, and I'm going to show you guys what that is. Guys, this is my pro workout meal. Two ground beef sliders. Uh, it's 80-20 beef. A handful of almonds. An Arnold Palmer. And I got this Sweet Baby Ray's secret sauce to go on the burgers. Got to the gym. Let's go inside. I'm thinking some flat bench to start because it's just the bread and butter, and then pretty much got everything else planned out in my head. I think we're gonna go for um, like a three by four to six with at least 250 pounds. So. Guys, my bench press got a lot better because I benched a lot more. So if you guys want to get good at bench press, just increase how many times you guys bench a week. It'll help a lot. What is up, guys? Welcome to the voiceover. Today we hit a chest workout. First exercise I hit was flat bench press for a 3x5 with 250 pounds. I went heavy because I wanted to shock my central nervous system, get everything firing, so the rest of the workout ran a lot more smoothly. So today I'm going to get into some scientific stuff. The first thing is EMG. Now EMG stands for electromyography, just the electrical activity of the muscle tissue. So pretty much how the muscle is actually firing and it helps tell what exercises activate which muscles and the best exercises for activating those muscles. So right here, as you can see, I have no spotter but 250 ran pretty smoothly, which I was very, very excited about. If I had a spotter, I probably could have gone 255, 260, but I was being cautious, which is the smart thing to do when you're lifting by yourself. The second exercise we're getting into is the incline dumbbell press. The anatomy of the pec major as you can see it has two heads the sternocostal head and the clavicular head uh, easy way to remember this is sternum and clavicle there really is no upper or lower pec like people think it's just the way that the fibers run they either descend or ascend and as you can see on this chart the purple bar is going to be for uh, 45 degree angle for incline and there is a 69% increase in upper pec activation when I say upper pec activation I mean the clavicular head of the pec major so I hit three sets with 80s and then 85s and then my third set was 90s I don't want for eight reps on all three of these Here's another picture of the muscle fibers in the pec major. As you can see, the fibers run on the so-called upper pec. They descend, which is why the favorable position would be a 45 degree angle. 
I usually use a 35 degree angle, but that is just personal preference and how I am comfortable on the bench. After this, we jumped into a machine chest press. There is still very, very high chest activation as you can see on the chart. The black bar is going to be the said chest activation with a machine press compared to dumbbells and a barbell. So the tempo on this was very specific. It was a one, one, three, one. So one up, one squeeze three on the eccentric and one at the bottom. Guys, this controlled tempo is going to ensure that there's a large time under tension, which is going to increase the overall volume of this exercise. I did three sets of this with about 12 to 15 reps. Really, really squeeze the chest at the top. That is probably the most important part of this exercise. On this machine, I really like to keep my elbows in. I feel like if they're in instead of almost chicken winged, I get a better range of motion when they're close to my body. So after that, we jumped into a decline fly. As you can see on this chart right here, the activation of bench press, flies, dumbbell bench press, pretty much just to give you an idea what, what the best exercises are for hitting an overall chest workout. Guys, look at this chart and pretty much just implement all of these exercises into your chest workout and you can't go wrong. With these flies, the tempo was very, very similar to the machine press. Really, really focus on the squeeze at the bottom to activate and contract the chest fully. I like doing them the decline way, so I get a little bit of said lower pec. After these chest flies, we actually jumped into some chest dips. I did these two sets to failure, and in another video I'm going to go more into depth why you should go into failure, and all the benefits that go along with going to complete muscle failure. After I did the dips, I went into the bathroom to show you guys a physique update. Did a little bit of posing. Felt pretty good. Abs are still visible, which is key. I'm still in a slight surplus. Like I said earlier, Gaining weight is tough right now because there's not a lot of food in the house because of the move. But physique looks pretty decent at this point. I really, really want to get up to about 200 pounds before I cut again. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this chest voiceover. I'll see you in the car. Just got out of the gym, guys. Crushed that chest workout. Everything went well. Everything went smoothly. So I'm pretty excited about that. Especially because I hit chest two days ago. So you guys are probably thinking, this kid doesn't train legs. Like, he only trains upper body. My hamstring is injured. My right hamstring. So I'm giving like two weeks off. Um, just static stretching. Dynamic stuff. Rolling out. And really just trying to recover fully before I jump back into any heavy deadlifting or squatting. So the reason I'm hitting so many chest workouts is because the program that I'm on in my head it's not written down but in my head I really really want to increase the frequency of, of my chest workouts because in the end it's going to pretty much it's gonna it's gonna help my chest grow because it's, it's something I've never done I'm benching more I'm I'm hitting more volume um, week after week so my chest is gonna have no option but to grow the only issue right now is I need to start eating more um, that's been a problem because we're, the move and whatnot, but I'll get back to it. I'm, I'm still sitting at uh, 190 pounds 
So let's go get some post-workout food in, probably a shake, and I'll see you guys at home. Steak, burritos, got some salsa, some sour cream, and some chiz. Some steam fried brown rice. And some rice. finished the vlog like I wanted to last night. I just didn't get around to it. <laughs> had a meeting. Um, we were moving stuff into the apartment. So yesterday was pretty hectic. But I'm going to end it right after breakfast. I'm going to show you guys what I'm having for breakfast. So let's go check that out. So guys, my breakfast is going to be three of these eggs, a banana. I'm going to have a glass of milk and this blueberry Thomas bagel. So I'm going to give you guys a quick tip. Um, the real way to whisk your eggs, instead of doing it in a bowl with a fork or an actual whisk, I apologize for the sniffles. I'm starting to get my allergies going. I need to take some Zyrtec. So you guys, pop your eggs in your blender bottle because that blender ball is actually a whisk. Chef tip, add a little bit of water to your eggs and it'll make them fluffier. Cap on. So guys, that's going to conclude this vlog. Um, I really hope you like it. I, I like switching it up. So if you guys want me to do more of these, just comment below. Definitely leave a thumbs up if you like the video at any point in time. Just just click that button real quick. And then if you want to see more videos, guys, just, just subscribe. We upload three times a week. Peace.